Welcome back to Innovative EduTalk, where information is factual and reliable. Again, we are your hosts, Eric and Ace Serratos, and Kendrick Denzel Ang, provide you knowledgeable discussion regarding to the educational innovation in today's era. The issue we are going to discuss today is about diverse families. We are excited to know all about diverse families from the legal frameworks to the perception of the community, teachers, and parents' interaction. All the way to the effects of the diverse families to children, and lastly, to the programs that we have here in the Philippines. What an interesting topic, right? Yes. So for today's talk, we invited professional and influential people that have expertise regarding this topic. They conducted a research way back 2020 entitled Diverse Families, Empowering Differences in the 21st Century Family Structures. Without further ado, let's call on our first researcher to introduce us the family structures as well as the legal frameworks. Ms. Sofia Rose Larioza, the floor is yours. In the Philippine context, there is an existing law that protects and gives guidance to the Filipino families. It is the Executive Order No. 209, Series of 8, 1987, or known as Family Code. It defines family as union of man and woman, who couples will be the one who build family. Family is a fundamental social unit, and it is valued and secured by public policy. Under the Philippine Family Code, children may be classified as legitimate or illegitimate. Under the Constitution, a legitimate and illegitimate children has a right to obtain financial assistance from his or her parents. However, an illegitimate child's support and entitlement may only be granted if the child has been accepted by his or, or by his father as his illegitimate child. Government created a law that will support, recognize, and protect the solo parent families. This law is Republic Act Number no. 8972, or known as Solo Parent Act. Government provide benefits that will help the solo parent family, such as flexible working schedules, parental leave, educational benefit for children, and as well as for the parents context, there is also a law that supports adoption, and it is the Philippine Inter-Country Adoption Act of 1995, and it is implementing rules and regulations of persons to be admitted and as well as children to be accepted. Different family structure will be also covered benefits and programs that will fit to their different needs. Many adults and parents have already understood the importance of teaching diversity to children at very young age. Miller 2019 said that teaching children inside the house and school about diverse family structure would not be enough. It should be done together with the community. It is good that there are also laws and advocacies for every family structure that is available here in the Philippines. Thank you very much, Ms. Lariota. Now let's call on Ms. Romilly Romero to further discuss the perceptions of the community and the interaction of parents and teachers towards family diversity. Now, we are going to discuss about the society's perceptions towards family diversity as well as the parents' perceptions towards teachers' communication on family diversity. There are increasing changes in the family structure with the emergence of the 21st century. The community has different point of views regarding to the changes in the family structure. They perceive these structures in both positive and negative manner. Positive perceptions among single parents discussed by different authors proves that this type of family structure has been widely acknowledged and accepted by society. Mayor 2012 states that the gender does not determine the integrity and credibility of the parent. It is also discussed that single parents have the ability to provide for their needs of their family and balance their work and family life. On the other hand, there are circumstances that the phenomenon of single parenting is perceived negatively. Abato, as cited by Mayor 2012, explains that the predominant stereotype continues to influence the society that is based on essentialist view, in which the mother is the primary caregiver of the child and the father is the breadwinner of the family. So those two are the two perceptions of the community or society towards family diversity. Now let's go on to the parents' perceptions towards teachers' communication on diverse family. Hornby and LaFell 2011 stated that family structure can be a barrier to family involvement in the school setting. There is a difficulty for the teachers to openly communicate with the parents in thinking that acknowledging the family's uniqueness would not give any benefit for the child. It is stated by Martino A. Cumming Potvin 2011. 
It is seen that there is insufficient training on working with families and students in diverse families, as well as the lack of research on how the school should collaborate with diverse families. More training is needed for teachers and other school professionals on working with families and students in foster a kinship care arrangements. It is important to look at the strengths of the family and their capacity to be viewed as healthy functioning families. Society should not discriminate against such diverse families for they are doing their best to create a healthy family and provide for the needs of their children. Great! We are informed that there are still stereotypes when it comes to family structure that we need to address. As well as the teachers who interact with the children and their family, they need to be knowledgeable as well. Thank you for that informative discussion, Ms. Romero. Now, I am thinking of what are the effects of the different family structure? Now is the perfect time. Ms. Therese Joyce Koyang is going to discuss about the different effects of family structures to children. The floor is yours. I remember the Greek philosopher Aristotle stated that the early years are the most crucial and important part of development. Therefore, children must be guided accordingly by their parents. Every member of the family has the responsibility to strive to have a wholesome and harmonious place as it greatly influences the children. Also, the children's character was first molded at home. Therefore, family transitions and family structures affect the children's behavioral and educational development. It is evident that the negative and misguided parenting habits result in poor behavior of a child. And who live with their biological parents show significantly better performance than those children who live with other uh, family transitions or family structures. According to Charlene and Fongby in 2011, children who face various family transitions and adjustments may bring a negative impact for their development. These transitions and adjustments include uh, divorce, separation, remarriage, and etc. So that leads to different types of family structures. It is good that we understand that there are effects that can influence the growth and development of the child. Right, it is very essential. Now our last but not the least researcher will discuss the final topic which consists of programs available for the different family structures here in the Philippines. May we call on Ms. Agatha Carla Tolentino. The floor is yours. Modern families have a variety of family structures and changeable forms. Given that fact, family-based programs have emerged to assist the needs and necessities of these families. The family-based program focuses on promoting positive development for both children and parents. However, some program focuses more on particular population. In the Philippine context, there are various family-based programs that do not require a specific family structure otherwise stated. For nuclear families, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, started Pilot for Peace, or Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program in 2007 and officially launched in 2008. The purpose of the Porpoise Program aims to provide financial assistance to families with minor children. Moreover, in 2016, the DSWD offered the Sustainable Livelihood Program or SLP for non porpoise beneficiaries. The program gives vocational activity and assists those who want to establish their businesses. The program for extended families is still unavailable here in the Philippines. However, in British Columbia, they have Extended Family Program or EFP that provides services for children that will live with their caregivers when their parents are unavailable to nurture them. An additional program that also offers support for extended families in Illinois, the EFSP or Extended Family Support Program, aims to provide temporary service to a relative caregiver. The goal of this program is to provide assistance for the relative caregiver and also to assist these caregivers in acquiring guardianship through the legal processes. For a single parent family, in the Philippines, solo parents or single parents are receiving benefits and privileges in line with Republic Act No. 8972, known as Solo Parents Welfare Act of 2000. There are programs that children of solo parents could inquire for assistance, and these are the Private Education Student Financial Assistance, or PESFA, Tulong Dunong, and Study Now Pay Later Plan, and Government Service Insurance System, or GSIS. For step family or blended family, some countries like Australia and America offers program for them. In Australia, they have Step Families Australia, which is a non-governmental program that provides mechanisms and resources to boost the bonds of step families and blended families. This program collaborates with various organizations in different states and research institutes to further learn and fulfill the needs of step families and blended families. 
in the Philippine context, the majority of family-based programs are in line with single parents and nuclear families. Despite the availability of these programs, not all are designed and regulated to provide assistance and support to all types of families. Thank you very much for informing us about the different programs. Thank you very much, Ms. Lariosa, Ms. Romero, Ms. Koyang, and Ms. Tolentino for a wonderful and informative discussion of your research, Diverse Families, Empowering Differences in the 21st Century Family Structures. Now may we call on our guest today to tell us a final message or the key takeaways for today's episode. We and our Family is the first essential cell of human society. All families are different and unique, but they have one thing in common. It's love. For me, acceptance should always start at home. This session is family can extend far beyond one household. We and our audience really learned a lot. Our guests gave great insights on how a child's family can overall affect their educational standing. Also, educators such as our researchers encourage future educators to give a new environment to the child as they are outside their home, absorbing new information easily with good memories, as negative memories may cause trauma to the child in the future. Yeah, you're right, Kendrick. In this discussion, with the researchers' clear explanation and presentation of diverse families, the effects of those interactions and structures within the family have great effects on the child as an individual. The family should be responsible and be role models for they will have a huge influence in the growth and development of the child. With this, we know what to do in order to make a child learn and make him or her choose the right decision in the future. Thank you for joining us in today's episode. We hope that you will use the knowledge we all learned today. See you on our next episode. Again, we are your hosts, Erickson A. Serratos and Kendrick Denzel Ang. This is Innovative EduTalk.